I recently got a hold of a Pico for the first time. I had been avoiding them for quite some time for no good reason and thought, well, why not give it a chance and create a product that I've wanted to make for quite some time. That project is the Free Deck. The Free Deck, in case you haven't seen it, is an Arduino who's made into a Stream Deck. And in case you don't know what a Stream Deck is, a Stream Deck is essentially a macro keyboard with a lot of screens on it. Why a Pico, you might ask? Why not just use an Arduino like the Free Deck project does? Well, as it turns out, the Pico is actually a pretty powerful little microcontroller. At $4, it's far cheaper than a regular Arduino. It has much more memory, a much higher clock speed, and you can program it with C, C++, and most importantly, MicroPython. Plus, I wanted to do a project where everything wasn't figured out beforehand, so I could struggle a little bit. And boy, struggle I did. The first thing I tried was to connect the screen to the Pico using one of these standard I2C screens. And there's a ton of tutorials on how to do that, so it wasn't especially hard. I just stole a little bit of MicroPython after plugging in the screen. And boom, the first step was done. Except I found out that I shouldn't use MicroPython, I should use CircuitPython instead, because MicroPython doesn't support USB emulation. Luckily, CircuitPython is pretty well developed and actually has great documentation. So I quickly got it up and running again with the screen, and it was a breeze. So then I added a second screen and then a third screen and boom, everything stopped working. It took me way too long to figure out, but even though the pinout of the Pico shows 11 different I2C connections available, it doesn't actually support 11 different I2C connections. And the reason for this is simply that it doesn't have 11 controllers, which makes perfect sense in hindsight. But I mean, that's what you get for not reading the data sheet, I guess. So that brings us to the hero of the story, the multiplexer. So what is a multiplexer? Well, for us, it means that we can throw one of these onto the Pico and it will let us use one single data pin to control up to seven screens. That way we can use one I2C controller instead of one per screen. Armed with that knowledge and a data sheet for the multiplexer, I figured out that all I needed to pay attention to was three selector pins. And by changing those to either high or low, I could select which screen I wanted to send data to. This was perfect for our purposes. So you may have noticed that it's not as fast as the Free Deck project. And you might be thinking, well, why is this? Well, I gotta be honest, I think it's more of an optimization thing in my code or an issue with CircuitPython itself more than it is the Pico's fault. And honestly, it might have been a lot better to use C or C++ for this project, but this will fit my purposes just fine for now. Now, I mentioned USB emulation earlier, and it's really cool because you can create whatever type of macro you want without any software installed on your computer. You can just plug it in and run whatever you want. And aside from a few bad choices and a realization that the Danish keyboard layout is pretty different than the American one, macro creation went pretty all right, I'd say. I mean, it's, it's Python, so. This here is the first macro that I created a macro that automatically opens an SSH connection to my Ubuntu server. At this point, we had all the different parts we needed. We had a custom macro and we had screens that we could send data to. So all we needed was to slap it all together and boom, these are the parts I ended up using for my final prototype. I used four screens, four buttons, one Pico, one multiplexer, one prototype board, and a bunch of wires. This part was so much worse than I thought it would be. It takes so much time to make all the different connections when you're doing them by hand and you have to remove the isolation from all the cables and all that, and everything is just in the way of something else. So, I mean, I guess that's just how prototyping is, but it was a pain. I had to redo quite a few parts, but eventually I got everything working just as it should be. After everything was done, had way too many wires around the micro USB connector, so I could barely plug the thing in. But I 
ended up creating a micro USB to USB C kit connector. And it's not so aesthetically pleasing, but it does the job. This is my version one. There's still a ton of things that I want to improve upon and I'm going to, but for now, it's shown me that the Pico is an amazing microcontroller. Given the ease of development and the cost of the board and specifications of it, I'll probably prefer a Pico to an Arduino in the future for most projects, at least, just because it's, it's so much simpler. I can't wait to see how the Pico community will evolve and how people will find different solutions to everything. And I'm assuming that everything will improve. For version two, I want to create a proper PCB, not just use a prototype board. I want it to have more player pages that it can load way faster so I can make all sorts of cool macros. And I want it to support icons. That's one of the things that I couldn't get working. Let me know what you thought about this video and the project in general. I'd love to hear your thoughts. In case you're interested in building something similar and want to see what I came up with and how I did it, I've left a link in the description to a GitHub page with all the necessary components and the schematic to the thing. Thanks for watching.